very, very important. It no, is that's not, not enough. It. For that's you. not what I want. Bad basketball. The refs killed the game, and I will be Ugh, the first this is to awful admit too. the f- Texans who will forever regret passing on Johnny is that Manziel. Serious right now? Oh, Golden Boy's coming back. And he wants to come back. Dancing with the stars. Dancing with the stars. He called out Conor McGregor. Oh, shit. That's true. No. (laughs) Yes. Hey, motherfucker. This this I can get into. Another episode Check of Scout out, Team out. Sports. My name is Chris America, and here to my left, I will go to you, sir. You will go to me now. Yeah, he's the not man here, with the golden why. mic, the Anthony man, Mack. How you doing, buddy? The man with the golden mic, Anthony Mack. It's only because Kyle isn't here, though. Yeah, but I could have gone to our special secret mystery guest. I actually thought you were going to go to him anyway. No, nah, man. I, I know you've been crying about how Kyle no, no, always no, no, goes no, no, to no, you no, last. I don't cry. And, I don't cry. I just, I just pointed out. Always- why are they always picking on you, man? Because they it's know easy. that if if I ever got mad enough, I could punch him out and it'd be all over. So Kyle is not here. So we got another beard here. We got another loud beard from the Basement Sports Report. Mr. Clayton Winter, how you doing today, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good, man. My beard isn't quite as loud as Kyle's, but I... Uh, <laughs> well, that's because you're I'm not a like, redhead like Kyle, and yeah. we all know no, how loud I, and evil those you know, guys my, are. My wife likes to tell me that my beard comes in a little ginger, so yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm trying to represent for him. There, there you go. go. Um, so, basement sports report, man. Tell us where we can find that at. We are at podcast BSR. That's on Twitter, Facebook, Google Play, Castbox, Podbean, iTunes, wherever you listen to podcast. We're at. 12 ounce radio 12 ounce sports radio.com you guys are our members as well we've made a lot of great connections there and, and they've got a lot of great podcasts other than just scout team and uh and bsr so check that out and then we're also a part of chair shot and that's at um at chair shot.com or chair shot.com if you Google, if you Google if you Twitter chair search shot. chair, chair shot, shot, you'll find it. Yeah. You probably have to work through some YouTube videos of actual chair shots, but eventually, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you'll find the website. Do you think they have it's videos? A, it's a of big wrestling shots? website, and it's really well done. They got a nice site, but they they wanted to include us, and and we appreciate that. And yeah, we're 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 doing good, man. BSR is uh, we're in our second season, and and we've worked with you guys a bunch. Worked with our friends over at two-man band a bunch it's it's fun man we like podcasting awesome yeah we we all found each other on twitter you helped me out with the um the fantasy football league the battle of the podcasts we yep. fell very very short so um, we, we we stopped mentioning it we stopped mentioning that's how embarrassed <laughs> we were by our our performance uh two-man band did end up winning it but then we got in with 12 ounce radio.com and that's where you can find us as well we're at 12 ounce radio.com they have a, a, sh- a radio station on the TuneIn app, live streaming. And actually, I don't know if you've been following our Twitter account, but we've been dropping little hints and, and little uh, pump-me-ups. A week from today at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, that's uh, 6.30 Central for you guys that are in the past, who, 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 we are you? going live, live on 12 Ounce Radio, the radio station on TuneIn or 12OunceRadio.com. We will be coming at you live. Live, 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 live. Very live, cool, live, live, very live. cool. Yo- Y'all have to let me know. I'll shout y'all out on that for sure. Yeah, man. Make sure you tune in because I don't know if you heard about our onesie bet. God damn it. Mm. So we picked out we, – we all made our selections for the national championship. I picked Oklahoma versus uh, Clemson. It doesn't matter who I picked. We, it didn't work. <laughs> all three of us got it wrong. And the deal was if you got your pick wrong, you have to show up to the, to the bar with a onesie. So all three of us got it wrong. None of us picked Alabama versus Georgia. So Nobody. not only are we going to be live, Nobody. but we'll be live at a Gators dockside wearing onesies. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> He's like, that's awesome. Love, you really think that's I love awesome? these ridiculous bets you guys come up with. The romper bet and now uh, the onesie bet. Yeah, the onesie next? bet. Uh, we were thinking maybe some Zumba pants. Those Zumba's? pants. Zumba's, man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The Zumba's are a big hit up here. 
Still, oh, really? still going around? You're kidding me? Oh yeah! Holy shit! Well, speak- I'm a big uh, I'm a big starter jacket guy. There you oh, go. So, so is this guy? I, I had a starter I, jacket. I've got a Florida Gator starter jacket. Boo! I, from the '90s with the old school Gator on the side, not oh, the head. Man. Right, right. The guy standing. The the dude in the the sweater and the muscles. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've got um a Wisconsin Badger starter jacket that was a hand me down from the in laws. Is it the same Badger with the sweater and the muscles? It's the Badger with the sweater and the muscles. Yes. But it's like a pullover. Right. And then. Just this week, I ordered up a Green Bay Packers starter jacket. All right. It's nice. not here yet, but I, I, I'll i go. Anthony, I'll send there you go. pictures when I get now, it. I'm now we're in business. Is, is that the one with the slice of cheese and the sweater and the muscles? No, no slice of no, cheese. No, <laughs> I feel like that was a thing in like the 60s no, no, and no, 70s and 80s. It is, wasn't a thing. What is our logo going to be? I don't know. Just put our mascot in a sweater and give him some muscles. No, that, that, yeah, wasn't, it. that wasn't it. Now, speaking much. of bets... Um, you and my boy Sean Daly from the College Tailgaters, he's a big Cubs fan. You oh, yeah. guys are big time Milwaukee Brewers fans. Now you're in Milwaukee? Yeah, yeah. I live uh I live just north of Milwaukee and we're about fifteen minutes from Miller Park. Okay, cool. Nice. So tell me about the bet that you guys you guys came up with two bets. You guys came up with one bet over the Twitter, but then your boy Zick doubled yeah, he down. Doubled, he doubled down and I was like, ooh, that was a little steep for my blood, but um, yeah. So what what happened was I think it just started like we were just talking sauce, you know. And I think I got on there talking about the Brewers, and and he said something along the lines of last year was a fluke. Ooh. I was like, oh Ooh. really? I was like, well, watch the Brewers win the division this year because it's gonna happen. Just watch. Okay. And it starts, you know, it always starts just talking sauce. Right, it's right. Twitter. We all do it to each other, you know what I mean? I get in I don't it talk with trash. Andy, I, get in it with, <laughs> I get in it with Big Rick over at Two Man Band because you know, Big Rick will get triggered over just about anything. <laughs> Even I if it's true, it with, he gets triggered about it. I, would, I get in it with Boston from the, our Boston insider, right. A.E. Thier. I get in it with him more than anybody because he's a diehard Patriots fan. Oh, so that's, that's how bad. it started, just a little sauce. And, uh, and, yeah, then he said, okay, how about this? Loser buys the other a, a case of beer because we got, you know, we got – we have the nectar of the gods up here. So what is this? So like new, that. new Glorus, new Glarus, new Glarus Brewing Company. Okay. Spotted Cow. Nice. Now, when I moved up here, I, I like, was obsessed with this brewery. I had to have everything they did, awesome. and it's awesome. And people come from all over the world to get Spotted Cow. Spotted so Cow. Said, I want a case of Spotted Cow. I said, okay, well, when we win, I'll, I'll, you know, I want some Illinois beer. You guys send me something, and. Quickly, Bertzik said, how about this? If we win, I'll buy your tickets or you know, whatever. If you win, you got to buy our tickets. And it's like, <laughs> whoa, do you realize how much Brewers Cubs tickets are? Yeah. Because it's only an hour and a half, two hours away. Well, I mean, well yeah. like So like you said, the wow. original bet was who wins the division. And then I know yeah. a St. Louis fan jumped in on that as well. Well, he was going to, and then he got scared. Oh, what? Like, no, I'm it's not just a case that. of beer. But then Zick was the like, "Tickets." So then you guys got talking trash about whose venue was better than whose, and then Zick was like, "You drive your happy ass up here, Sean, and we'll go to a <laughs> Brewers game, and whoever wins that game yep. buys the Brewers uh, Cubs tickets." So, <laughs> yeah. And then I was wanting to jump in on that, but I'm like, wait yeah, a minute, I, I don't. Yeah, that's a long drive, homie. I'm a, uh, yeah, no, I'm a Tampa no, no. Bay, I'm a Tampa Bay Rays advocate, not even a baseball fan. So here I am jumping in on this bet that I have no business being in. Yeah, I'm out. I mean, <laughs> you can typically go to a Brewers game for like ten to twenty bucks. Okay. Oh, okay. Good deal. And when the Cubs come to town, they it spike to like between eighty and a hundred because. Wow. All those people come up from Chicago, and they can go to a a much better, much better sports venue, and they can get the tickets for about half the price is what it would cost to go to Wrigley. So we sell out for Cubs games at Miller Park, and it's mainly just because, you know, all the Cubs fans come up here from Chicago trying to get a, a cheap game. Awesome. So that is a cheap game. Yeah. But, I mean, that's what happens when it's big-time rivalries. Uh, Chicago and Milwaukee are not that far apart from each other. 
it's a it's it's turning into a rivalry as the Brewers get better. For yeah, me. it's fun. It's fun, man. <laughs> Well, I mean, both of the well, both hey, teams are now finally. Yeah, I'm about to say the Cubs tops. really weren't good, right? It took them what a yeah, hundred years. Well, the Cubs were terrible for a long time. Not until they got our boy they Joe Madden. Yeah, okay, there it is. All right, so since we're on the topic of baseball, 6 p.m. Man, big announcement: Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, no surprise, Chipper Jones came in. I want to play a little game with Anthony since he's very anti-baseball. I'm not I'm anti-baseball. Gonna, you just don't watch it. I just don't watch it. All right, so let's see if you know these names. So we got Chipper Jones. He's a white guy. I, I guess His that's name's true. Chipper. He's yeah, he's definitely white. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and then we got Guerrero. What's his first name? See, I'm bad with names. Vlad- Vladimir. Vladimir. That's right. Vladimir what's Guerrero. The, what's the question? Do you know who that is? No. <laughs> he's not a white guy. He's not a white. He's guy. not no, a white no, guy. No, absolutely. Uh, now you got to know the name Dominican. Tomei. Tomei. Yeah. Jim First name Tomei. Jim Tomei. Sounds familiar, but no, no. And then is it Dustin Hoffman? I think <laughs> from it's Speed. Justin. Justin. Here, I'm about to say really. Dustin Hoffman know. from Speed. Yeah. No. No. He's the only pitcher in the in the bunch. I know that. Yeah. Justin Hoffman sounds familiar. Justin Hoffman. Yeah. He yeah. was a pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um. So another name. So those are the four names that made it in. No. Now, obviously, I think you'll know some of these names that didn't get in. Uh, you should know Manny Ramirez, right? I know Manny. Okay, he he didn't get in. He came in at a low twenty two percent. Another name that was really low that surprised me. I don't know. Maybe you know more about it, Clayton. Uh, Andrew Jones was a name that I remember from the nineties. He's at seven percent. Is he just he just doesn't have a chance of getting in, Clayton? I you know he's a guy that that's not a name that really rings to me much. So. If you're not a household name, if you're not – there's so many players in the game of baseball. To me, if you're not a household name, probably not getting in. Uh-huh. Chipper Jones, everybody knows who Chipper right. Jones Chipper. is. Yeah. It, same thing with Vlad. Vlad was a, a – you know, Vladimir Guerrero was was a stand-up guy. These guys that are are up for this are guys that were never mentioned in, in PEDs. Mm. They never had any issues off the field. These are stand – well – they, yeah, I, I, these are stand-up guys for the most gotcha. part. Gotcha. Right. I, don't, I don't know exactly who Andrew Jones is. I'm okay, nice. he played with Chipper Jones on those Braves teams. Like, maybe that's the only reason why okay. I know who he is. But So let's go over some household names that didn't make it who were associated with PEDs. Sammy Sosa, 7.8. I think for now it's safe to say that guy's never getting into the to the Hall of Fame if he's at 7.8%. Why? Didn't he like win the home like have the most home runs in the season or something like that? Yeah, and then he basically had it all erased cuz he was taking steroids for that. Mm. And he got caught with a cork bat. Yeah, that too. The ah. bat had a uh, cork like wine cork. Yeah. It had cork in it. Yeah. It makes a ball pop and Ooh. yeah, no. The wow. bat broke one time. They walked out there and looked inside of it, and we're like, no, no. No, no. Wow. You're out of here. So he was always trying to look for an edge, whether it was PEDs, cork bats, whatever it was. Son of a bitch. Much. Yeah. Sammy, really? Sammy Sosa, man. Oh, Slamming Sammy. Sure. Um, and then you obviously have Roger Clemens and uh, Barry Bonds. Um, Barry Bonds. Roger Clemens. I'm coming around on <laughs> the fact that he should be allowed in because the more and more I think about it, Maybe I'm wrong on this, but they never proved that he was on anything, correct? Didn't he quit before that, That like they were able to finish the investigation or something? No, like no, he, he finished it out. They just never proved it. He was never suspended for, for steroid use, at least. So I don't know how, if baseball allowed him to continue to play, how you can hold something against him in the Hall of Fame. They never proved it, but... Hmm. Talked to our baseball insider about it earlier tonight, and his take on it was that his buddy or his brother, whoever, took the fall for him. Right. What happened? How, how, how do you take the fall for somebody that's taking steroids? He wasn't out there. I, th- do, I don't remember the specifics on exactly how that all went down, mm. but I do know that I feel the same way as you do. I, I think I'm slowly but surely I'm coming around on on Barry Bonds. I'm I'm totally but surely coming around on Clemens too, but I don't know that that the baseball purists will ever let guys that were involved with that kind of stuff. I don't know that they'll ever let them get in. Yeah, and in a way, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I will. 
I feel like the steroid era was kind of pushed along by Major League Baseball. I don't know if you remember this, but after that uh, strike in, what was it, 93, 94, whatever season that was, I remember the late, the mid to late 90s, baseball was pretty much dead in popularity. And then you had that Sammy Sosa, uh, Mark McGuire home run race, and the popularity took off afterwards. Then all of a sudden, oh, baseball yeah. came back into our household <laughs> names, and everybody that. starts taking it. So I don't know if baseball pushed it on them, but there's no way baseball didn't know what was going on and didn't allow it to happen. Um, one other name I want to throw out there that didn't make it. He was at 50% or around there. And I want to know if you think he should get in claim. That's Kurt Schilling. He missed the spot. Do you do you think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame? Oh, deserve is tough. Deserve is and if you and if you listen to our show, you know that when I am uncomfortable with something, I just ride the fence. <laughs> um, I think I think that there there is there's not a lot of hard fast criteria on what gets you in the Hall of Fame. Right. There's nothing that says if you hit X amount of home runs, you get in. There's nothing that says if you bat 400 for an entire season, you get in. There's nothing that says if you pitch three, four, five perfect games in your career, you get in. So it's a lot of eye tests and it's a lot of just voting. Yeah, and politics. I think that that there are parts of that voting system that are definitely faulty, and I think that – Kurt Schilling's play on the field was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Rich Eisen always says that the Hall of Fame, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, is a museum of sorts. And he always uses the criteria of can you tell the story of baseball? Can you tell the story of football and leave this person out of it? And by going by that, you can't tell the story of baseball without mentioning Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling is a huge part of baseball. And if that's what I mean, I, I really do view the Hall of Fame as a museum. It's a historical museum, and that's why I don't get how you can leave out guys like Barry Bonds, like Pete Rose. Look, you can I know about Pete. Rose. You can sit there and punish people. <laughs> I don't. I don't feel like Hall of Fame should be this punishment thing. That a, a thing that you leave over the head of punishment. You punish players in other ways. I don't agree with like. Like Terrell Owens not being in because we don't like his character. Well, Terrell Owens is a hell of a wide receiver. You can't tell the story of football without Terrell Owens. You can't tell the story of baseball without Barry Bonds or Kurt Schilling. So we need to my, stop my, being on our high horse. We, we say that, but USC erased a whole season. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you, you can't say that, right? Oh, I don't know, but is – I don't know. So I, Which, I can, is, worse? I can Which see... is worse, the steroids or getting your mama a house? Which is worse? No, I mean, I, I agree with you. All right. Um, and that's a whole other ball of wax that we're talking about it's when you're talking thing. about Heisman trophies and, and wins it's and the, losses no, it's and the everything. Same thing. But it's the same thing. I don't think it's the same thing. I and think I'll it's the same why. thing. All right, go ahead. You, you, you said it's, it's, it's a museum of sorts. That bloody sock belongs in a museum. Right. You know what okay. I mean? And I think, I think that he, he has done – Dude, Kurt, Kurt Schilling is one of the weirdest people in the world. He's I'll done some that. really weird, out there, zany things. Now, the difference is you're talking about professionals that are now out of the game completely, and you're talking about college students. Now, we can go into pay for play all we want to, but it, it's two very different things to talk Hall of Fame once a player is completely done. And a college athlete that never made a dime for it and is now playing in the league. Now, so is worse. In the, case, in the case of Reggie Bush, you would have had to pry that Heisman from my cold, dead fingers. <laughs> I would have never given it back. Yeah. But so I'm saying that's 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 what makes it worse. They took a Heisman and erased him from USC. But yeah, yeah but these he, we're arguing over these guys who did. Uh, steroids and they can't get in the hall of fame all reggie bush did was get his mama a house listen you won't find me arguing about players taking money because i think players should be paid in some form or fashion and again that's a whole nother ball of wax and everything so all right let's move on to um to basketball and like you said you're about 15 minutes north of milwaukee big story out of milwaukee this week was uh jason kidd out 
what was what was going on before in Milwaukee? Because this kind of surprised me. Obviously, we don't hear much about Milwaukee Bucks down here in Orlando. So, no. what's going on in the sports radio world? Were fans calling for this? Uh, industry people were calling for this. Um, not necessarily fans. I think that mediocrity isn't going to be tolerated when we have this squad. And it's been a couple of years now. It's been three, four years now, and we haven't gotten much better. We're at seven seed. We right. almost fell to the nine. And it's one of those things where between – I can name names all day. I mean between Brogdon and and Giannis and, and you know, Thon Maker developing and you got Jabari coming back and, and Chris Middleton's averaging over 20 points a game. When you've got some of the weapons they've got on that team, losing the amount of games we have and being as mediocre as we've been and not building on on last year, it's not okay. And, and you look at Jason's kid, Jason Kidd's numbers and and you know offense with Giannis off the court, defense with Giannis off the court, and win percentage. We haven't gotten any better. Industry guys have been calling for this guy's head, even though fans. A lot of NBA fans are casual, man. They're not people that are going to watch people that are going to watch regular season games. And I'll be honest, I'm going to check out the Bucks, and that's about it. I'm not tuning in to, to regular season NBA basketball every night. Right? I don't. I don't pay attention to after the All Star break. To be exactly. honest, exactly after I don't, the All Star break. After March, we'll watch. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So after the All Star break, things get interesting, and then playoff. That I mean. Dude, playoff basketball is great. Right. I get, mm-hmm. out of, I get out of bed for that, you know. But but I think that watching this Bucks team has been really, really frustrating. And Giannis has taken a huge step up. I mean, he's the Greek freak, man. And, and if you're not on the Giannis train, you need to get on. Oh, yeah. Because this kid, oh, he's unbelievable. And to watch him in person is so crazy. Gotcha. But he's taken this big step up, and the team – hasn't and that's nine times out of ten gonna fall at the feet of the coach and that's what we saw happen so kids out kids who, out who you getting kids out i don't know who we're gonna get man. i i think that there's a lot more questions than answers right now i think that they're gonna let this this interim coach do his thing for a while probably till the end of the season we'll probably end up being a you know six or a five seed probably get bumped in the first round just like last year and then we move into a brand new facility next year we got Giannis tied up for the next two or three and at that point in time this job becomes very very desirable I would I think they're going to make a a maybe not a big name maybe not a Doc Rivers or a you know a Gundy a Van Gundy I, but uh, I Doc think they Rivers might a be splash available. in the offseason and this job all of a sudden makes makes coaches without a job or coaches that are currently on a contract that aren't necessarily happy with their situation. You mean like Frank Vogel at Orlando? Uh, I don't know if I want <laughs> Frank Vogel at Orlando, but I'm just saying I'm right. just saying it's, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. make some other coaches glance over and go, wow, they're moving into yeah. brand new facilities, brand new practice facilities, brand new medical facilities. I got the, potentially – what will be when LeBron? I've read so many articles. When LeBron's done, this is Giannis's league. I yeah. mean, he's wow. going to be dominant. I hear and, you. and and I think that's a that's a big draw along with all of the extras. You got Malcolm Brogdon, who's a rookie. If did he win Rookie of the Year last year? I know he was a candidate. Um, I couldn't tell you to be honest with you. Yeah, you've got a young kid in Thon Maker that's that's improving. I mean. I, I think it's a desirable place to land if you're a head coach. Well, this is my problem with the fire of the Jason Kidd. You're at a number seven seed. Yeah. You're in the playoffs at this point. You you, you trug along, you you see if you get better. You fire a coach, not even before before the all star break, and all of a sudden you you're left without a, a captain at the helm. I always hate when people say, Hey, let's go ahead and get rid of this, that and the other and you still got games left and it's not like you are at the you're not the Atlanta Hawks right now. You're not the Orlando Magic. You're at the seventh seed. Right. Let the guy finish out his season. Who gives a crap what every what the industry guys want? I mean, I, I heard Giannis I, was pissed off that Jason Kidd left. 
I think it's I think it's more than just the industry guys wanting him out. I think the writing had started to be on the wall that we weren't going to get much better with him. Well, you're not going to get better without him. It's tough, man. It's tough, but I don't like the way they did it in that Giannis is is hurt, so he's down for two games. Is what they he's got a sore knee. They're going to sit him for two games, Mm -hmm. and then after the first one, you fire your coach. Uh, I, I think too. They look at. The three teams ahead of them are the Warriors, sorry, the uh, the Wizards, the Heat, and the Pacers. And you got to look at the Milwaukee Bucks roster and say, in a lot of ways, we're better than those three teams. Maybe not the Wizards. The Wizards have a lot of good talent. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Wizards have a lot of good talent. But when you look at the Pacers and the Heat roster and you say, like you said, we got Giannis. He's probably the third or fourth best player in the league. We should be better than the Heat and the Pacers who basically – I can't name a big time superstar on either of those teams. I know Hassan Whiteside was a name for a happy minute, but you haven't heard much it's about like, him. But you should be it's like Kid you, Oladipo or whatever. On yeah, the Victor Pacers. Oladipo. Yeah. Yeah, but you should be and but, you are two different things. But I would the, put, ca- the Cavaliers should be better than the Raptors, right? Yeah. The Cavaliers should be better than well, Boston, let, right? Let's talk about the Cavaliers. Come on, let's go. Because you mentioned uh, you mentioned that you might be looking for a new coach. Well, if Cleveland Cavalier fans have their way, they want Tyru- Tyron Lue gone. And, Which I don't get. And once again, you're number three in the seed. Like, it's number three. Why panic? You're number three. You're going to make it to the playoffs. Well, my question with this is, you got rid of the guy before because this is what LeBron wanted. LeBron put his guy in there. Now, all of a sudden, LeBron's not happy with the guy that he put in. And this is you why taking players suggestions This is why I feel lives. like people hate LeBron. LeBron could be a very likable player if he would just be a basketball player. But instead, I, he wants to name coaches, and he wants to move players, and that's why wait, wait, Kyrie's wait, wait. like, yo, I'm out. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying LeBron wants to get rid of uh, Lou? Uh, I know he wanted to get rid of the guy before him. Uh, okay, that's and fine, but you're saying he wants to get rid of Lou now. Well, if, if Lou goes, then it's because LeBron wanted him to go. I'm not thinking that's what it is. I'm, not, I'm thinking So you think fans. if Lou goes, you think that LeBron will have nothing to do with it? I mean, I, he'll have something to do with it. They're not going to fire Lou unless LeBron, LeBron gives the okay. I, I'll give you that, but they're also going to keep him if LeBron says keep him, right? Right. I'm, 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 I'm with Anthony on this one. I don't think Lou is going anywhere, but what, yeah. what you can say is that Cleveland is absolutely dysfunctional. They, they, yeah, something's absolutely wrong. Absolutely dysfunctional. Something's wrong. Well, Everybody, else, go ahead. What else I'll tell you is they are only like one or two games off of the pace that they were on last year. Right. This isn't the exactly. end of the world. Exactly. Well, everybody's I don't, give a, I don't give a shit what happens until LeBron gets to the playoffs. He goes dark, and it's playoff LeBron. Right. And and, and he just takes over the game. You know, I hate the guy. I am right. not a LeBron. I'm I'll be dead dead honest with you. I am not a LeBron guy. Oh man. I think wrong. him going on Instagram and congratulating himself for reaching <laughs> thirty thousand points yeah. prior to the game even tipping off. Come on, that's man. the kind of thing to me. It's not what you're saying, right? It's that kind of stuff yeah. that makes people hate him. That's true too. You're, he's he's insufferable. Yeah, but at the same time, they're only a game and a half off of what they were last year. At this point, well, they're going to be fine. They just got to get back to winning games and figure it out. The exactly. whole Kevin Love thing and all the drama, though, it's dysfunctional, man. Yeah, it's, it's in a lot of ways. They're like the Patriots. This is what we see with the Patriots every season. <laughs> every year, we're going to see a story about the Patriots, about how Tom Brady is, is off his game, or him and Belichick are fighting, or there's always something. Just I like don't with, know. This one's got evidence, though. This one with the Cavaliers, <laughs> it's the same thing. Every year we go through this, where there's this dry spell of like three or four weeks, and we were like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with the Cleveland Cavaliers? And then, like we were talking about, they just playoff time comes around and they turn it on. So Exactly. But I don't think this team. But I, I, st- I think this team's gonna be hard pressed to make the finals. To be honest with you. But I still think Kevin Love's expendable. That, like, that, like that's because that Celtic squad is raw. It is raw. I mean, they're they're playing decent ball. They they're battle tested, but even they've have gotten to a little slide lately. What is it? Four in a row now, or something. Something like that. Four yeah. in a row. Yeah, they lost four, four in but- a row too. So I mean. Every team goes through it, and I'm I'm actually glad Boston is actually going through it now instead of in the playoffs where they can't figure it out and like, oh my god, I, what, what's going on? You know, figure it I out now during the regular season. I don't know why I'm actually kind of pulling for Boston. You know, I I think they've got a really good squad right now. They've got a really good thing to. 
if nothing else, they're a really fun team to watch play basketball right now. I can't root and from anybody from a guy from that doesn't watch a lot of regular season teams other than my team. And, and I, you know, I, I think anybody but LeBron is kind of like how I feel about about the Patriots. But at the same time, you give the the people of Boston, a, a, you know, a Super Bowl and an NBA Finals appearance in, in, in one year. It's kind of insufferable, too. I, I can't root for anybody from Boston or New York. Sorry. It's just not in my mind. Yeah, brain. I don't blame you. I, I can't do it. I can't do it, man. Nope. I like Kyrie. I, I, I think he's a great ball player. But sorry, man. He just put on the wrong jersey. I can't do it. Well, you I went will, to the wrong place. It was the wrong place, man. Well, I will end the topic with this. The Celtics have had their four-game losing streak, but the Cleveland Cavaliers have the same number of wins as the Orlando Magic since Christmas with a total of three. So when you have a stat that's equal to the Orlando Magic, things are not going well. I mean, fuck. Yeah, I guess so. That's a great statistic. You guys always do a worse weekend than you. Yeah, I'll tell you who's having a worse week than the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's this. Uh, I can't. I can't remember what his last name is, but I got his or his first name. But I got his. I think it's Larry Nasser. Nasser. This guy from yeah, Michigan State. Uh, Nasser. Uh, oh man. Today, man, the judge let him have it. He threw the book at him. She threw. She threw the book at him hard. Forty to a one hundred and seventy-five years in prison. This is on top of sixty years he's already got for child pornography and everything. And this story, man. We talked about this last week, whether or not we should talk about it or anything. And we we like to be a fun, energetic show. We try to stay away from the serious topics, but this story just has not gone away. And it's kind of like, well, we're doing this. It shouldn't go away. Don't talk. No, it shouldn't. I'm not saying that it should, but um, I feel like the bigger news though today or the last few days has been the way that Michigan State's been handling this thing. It's very much like Penn State. Um, You got Tom Izzo coming out. Speaking to, I support the president no matter what and everything else. And uh, a board member went on some radio show and just basically was so dismissive. Just we're the institution is great. We don't need to have to worry about anything. Basically said we'll pay these women off to go away and everything's going to be fine. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you guys heard the interview, but at one point he asked if the the interviewer said, "Hey." What do you think about an NCAA investigation? He just kind of laughed and said, "Ha! What is the NCAA going to do to us? Like, they 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 got nothing on us." Um, it's a crazy story. I don't know, man. They, like, they all need to go to jail. I, I mean, I mean, at some point, me, dude, just, somebody has to me, stop it. Go ahead. It makes me sick to my stomach, man. It's the whole thing is just gross. It, it, it's it's one of those things that that so much has been swept under the rug at that school. And so much has been swept under the rug by different associations and board members and this and that. It's hard to know who to hold accountable other than this guy. You hold them all accountable. This judge throw the book at this dude. They drop the hammer on him and he deserves it, you know? Definitely. And if it's one or two victims, you can say, all right, the institution can claim ignorance. It's hard to know what these guys are up to, but I think they had 160-plus women go up and testify against this guy, and there's no way that there's that much going on that you that you don't know about it. There's just no way. What well, a slow this fire. Yeah. And, and he, he, he fooled a lot. I mean, I, I'm not sure if he fooled people because people were – Saying, "Hey, look, this is happening." This is and happening. The school and everybody was just like, "Ah, oh, you know." That's what I'm saying. When there's right. four or five victims, yeah. maybe you can claim ignorance. But when there's 160 people coming out, yeah. there's no way. Yeah, but, there's no way you can't know. Yeah. But act right, like. But act right. Don't act like you didn't like. It, take a hold yourself accountable a little bit at least. Right. Don't act. You know what? And even now, act like what is what is the NCAA going to do to us? Right, We're a great institution. Like that's bullshit. Act right. There are people that that's lives have been greatly, Ruined. greatly changed because right. of this one scumbag. And you guys are going to act like this? Yeah. What happened to the buck stops here? Like if like if you said it to me, and I went to the guy above me, and I said, "Hey, look, something's going on. We need to investigate." And nothing happened. Obviously, I gotta go over that guy's head, and if he, that doesn't happen, then you know it comes a point in time where you gotta say, you know what, 
I got to stop it myself. Yeah. And, and in this case, this was years. Right. And no one like said. Like 20 years. And no one said the buck stops here. Everybody just passed, passed it on it to the next guy. And that, to me, that's that's actually scary. It's not, forget ignorance and, you know, all oh, it was wrong. It's actually scary that no human being in that facility, in that organization said enough's enough. Right. Not, not one of them. And not even that, but kind of like you said. How do you not have a PR guy that says, this is what you say from here on out? You guys screwed up. You don't have to own up to being screwed up, but say stuff like, we are absolutely disgusted by this, and as a university, we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure this never happens again. We take sexual assault seriously. Instead, it's just stupid stuff like, yeah, these women are probably going to come after us financially, and even though money can't can't uh fix everything we'll go ahead and we'll take care of them that way and then the university's just going to move on it's just so there's no empathy there's no they seem so i don't know what the word is i'm looking for but just no you hit it on the head there's no empathy and 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 act right just yeah. act right have a pr guy that that i don't care if you have a pr guy or not the, the these women have been have been you know violated Right. It's, vi- it's got to, you know, I've had things stolen from me and felt violated, let right. alone the way that, that this guy has treated people. Right. And uh, it, it, think about if you're the victim and you watch an organization like a university, somebody you thought was protecting you and helping you get an education and this and that, sweep this under the rug and and, and go to bat for who, whoever was responsible it's it's wrong man and, and you know i i hope it in some way does hurt them where where it really should and and you know maybe they see maybe they see enrollees drop maybe they see blowback in other ways who knows M- but, money money is not going to be the 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 the, the solve this problem it has to be jail time not. it has to be actual tangible punishment not hey you look you, you know where enrollment's down you're gonna be forced to retire with your five million in the bank no you have to go to jail and you have to lose everything to make a point to people because we are in a day and an age where people don't have empathy where people don't care about their fellow people where people don't even care about the people that they're actually working for right and that's that's the scary part to me like no one right. said enough's enough this is my job to protect these kids and stop it no one said that that's the scariest thing me having kids that's the scariest thing in the world to me it is and it seems like every other year it's it's a baylor it's a it's a penn state now it's michigan state who's going to be the next college to yeah. have to be i i honestly as a gator fan i fear that 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 could come out like that, and I don't think that Florida is perfect, but I would hope that the administration there would do things the right way and take care of things the right way. But I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna end, know, I'm gonna end my rant on this. If it ever happened to my kid, oh, you better pray that the cops catch. <laughs> oh it. yeah, cause it's over. Like I, it, I've always said, if if you if something were happening to my kid that way, there'd be two calls to the cop. One is either. Uh, you know, his family calling or her family calling like, hey, my, my son or daughter's missing. I don't know where they are. That's going to be the one call. Or the other call is going to be from me saying, hey, uh, I came down here and I messed things up and there's no way I'm going to be able to get away with this. So I'll be out in the front yard <laughs> yeah, laying face down. <laughs> you guys come clean up my mess. And, and that's, yeah, the, and that's I, the truth I, of it, man. I'm, I, there's certain things that, you know, we talk about empathy and everything. If something happened to my kid, I always tell my kids, you got to tell me the truth because daddy's going to go to jail for you. Daddy's gonna, yeah. daddy's gonna kill somebody for you. I'm just being honest. So you gotta tell me the truth, because if you lie to me and Daddy kills somebody innocent, yeah. it's on you. It's on you. But if it, but if it's the other way around, somebody actually did something to you. All you need to do is say, Daddy, this is what happened, you know, and the body disappears. <laughs> I don't have kids, you know, but it would be a situation like y'all are talking about. Like, hey, there's a dead yeah. guy in my yard. Come and, come and come get, and get him. Actually, I'm going to try to get away with it. I ain't gonna well, that's what I'm saying. The first call would be yeah, me I'm trying try to get, get away with it. Yeah, I'm going to get away with it. Sometimes things get messy, and you know, yeah. I'm no Dexter, all right? I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to sneak up and get you with the little syringe, and then I got some warehouse with 
with all the plastic lining and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you. But, uh, but I, I, mean, I, I'm a, I don't, I don't fear that it's a story about my university is going to come out with something like this. I fear I have a little sister, and I have I have family, that, and I have I, I have friends that have kids like you guys, and and I fear that that this is going to happen to somebody I know. Right. And I could give a shit about my university if something like no, this No, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But it, it, you know what I mean? If, 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 if this were to come out about somebody I know and somebody was, was victimized like that, man, it'd be, it'd be devastating and be yeah. tragic, tragic. And you would, even on the outside looking in, you would feel like, like, uh, a part of it. So you would feel little, helpless. Well, for a little bit. For a little bit. But then I find I'll, I'll end on this. And um, one of the things that I took away with it, everybody likes to have like some sort of awareness and everything. The um, the victims got to go out and speak their mind or, or call that guy out, basically share their story. And it's very cathartic for people like that to to gain, I guess, uh, power over their their abuser. And one of the things that struck me was one of the girls said that I repeatedly went to my parents – and the Nasser, you and Nasser, convinced them that I was lying. And I guess the awareness thing that I would say is if you have a kid that comes to you and says, hey, this happened to me. That's horrible. You know what I mean? Like, I, I sit there and I wonder about those parents. Like, how do you not believe your own kid? Like, what can this stranger tell you to make you not believe it? So Absolutely. if you're of that mentality that, oh, well, my kid's lying. I don't, I don't know a kid that horrible would lie parent. about something like this. Horrible. I don't well, I well, don't know. It well, may, but I mean, that's a common occurrence when it comes to abuse like that. A lot of it continues on because a kid will say, "Hey, my uncle, Uncle Larry, or or this doctor, or this very trusted person whom you know and love, is abusing me." And I don't know what it is. Maybe inside your head, you're like, "No way can my friend, my brother, my my trusted doctor could do this to my kid." I don't know. So if I was to say any awareness thing, listen to people that reach out to you. I, I totally agree with that. I'm I'm going to believe my kid over anything. And that's why we have candid conversations with him. You got to be honest with me. But on the other flip side, we do have these guys who, these these people, who will use it as a weapon. We've seen it. I honestly, and not to get off subject, but I honestly believe it happened to Ezekiel Elliott this year. I honestly do believe that he got caught up and the girl used it against him. The, the young lady used it against him. His stardom, his power, and said, "Look, I'm I'm going to take everything away from you." Right. And this is how. I honestly do believe we have people out there to do it. That's why we have institutions that do investigations and everything. And we have to. And that's why we have to trust these institutions to do the investigation. That's why MSU is so culpable right now because people trusted them, even in the face of all these allegations, to say this was true, this was false. Right. That's what's like going to hurt them at the end of the day. I like that. I like that a lot. You you do have to trust the institutions, and I think that that's why it's even more messed up than it already was is Absolutely. because that trust was put in the hands of these people, and they, they, they broke that trust. Right. A lot of but people. But at the same time, I, I agree with you. I, I think that, you know, if your kids are saying something, at least give it its due diligence and try to dig. Yep. And I think that that these people, man, are they're sociopaths. They're liars. They're good at what they do. This guy probably seemed like the nicest dude in the world. Oh, of course. He it it always is. Like, he, he probably seemed like, and he's smart. He's a doctor. Yeah. He knew how to get away with this stuff, and he did it for years. Yeah. So people got to realize, ninety ninety probably like I'm making this up, but I would say the majority of the time it's not going to be. A guy in a rickety van coming up to your kid and no, snatching him. It's, you know. it's like I said. It's gonna be an uncle. It's that, gonna be a cousin. It's gonna be a doctor, a teacher, it's gonna somebody be a trusted. Guy that looks like any single right. one of us that has built the trust, and you trust them. Right. And yep. and it's and it's you know. I've I worked I've worked with a guy. Knew him from I don't know. I just knew him through other friends, but I worked with him also. And he got arrested and booked for child pornography. I would have never guessed in a million years. The next day when I came into work, I saw his face on the news. It's like it's so surreal whenever you're watching the news and you see a dude that you know, his, his mm -hmm. mugshot pop up. And then they're like arrested for child pornography and your jaw just drops even further. And it's – you never know, man. It's just – You never know. We've all got stories like that. Yep. You, you never you know, know. But I, once again, it goes back to the system. It was not just him. 
it was everybody that protected. No, me. I mean, and they that's helped the crazy out. thing. They assisted. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. When when you got six people in a room and all six of them are lying for you, that's the yeah. crazy thing to me. Like nobody said, you know what? Enough's enough. I'm going to stand up and do the right thing. That's crazy. Yeah, that's absolutely nuts to me. All right, so the hardest part about transitioning from these type of topics to another topic is there's no good way to do it. So I'll no just, good let's way. just do it. Let's so let's talk NFL playoffs. Um, Boo. We'll start off with the we'll start off with the boring game. Um, there was a boring game. Yeah, Minnesota and uh, Eagles. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There was a boring game. Now, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Am I misremembering this? I felt like a while ago. Is misremembering a word? I don't know, but it is now. All right. it, am I recalling this wrong? I felt like the the two championship games were on. One was on Saturday. One was on Sunday. I thought the same thing. You're not. Is that how one. it used to be? I used to think the same thing. One was on Saturday. One was on Sunday. I never I thought so too. I don't know what what happened. Yeah, All I know is they need to go back to that yeah, because absolutely. the Saturday same thing. Was so boring. The same thing happened with the college football playoff. Is you watch this really good game between Georgia and Oklahoma, or between the Jaguars and uh, and the Patriots, and then you. I, I was spent after both games. I was like, I, I I don't even want to watch this next game because I'm just emotionally, I got nothing left. Hell, so was the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> I, apparently they were watching that Jaguars Patriots game and they it came out flat. Spent. So after the Eagles went up by two scores, I'm like, all right, I'm okay, out. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Same thing with with the Clemson uh, Alabama game. Yeah, it got boring. After a few drives, I was like, I this is too. This is like watching paint dry right now. After watching Oklahoma versus Georgia, so I don't know what else to say about this Minnesota Eagles game other I mean, than Nick Foles <laughs> balled out. And Casey Keenum yeah. didn't. And uh, Case Keenum and, and the Vikings defense disappeared. Yeah. L- ugly thrown balls. I told you. Hashtag ugly thrown balls. That guy, I, like that. I, t- I, t- I told you. He wasn't. I mean, it was a good defense. It was a good, solid team. But it was just something about him that was just like, you don't belong here. You don't belong here. And Eagles kind of said, yeah, <laughs> you don't belong here. My thing is, is everybody wanted to uphold that Vikings defense, and everybody took the hey, a majority of people I know took the Vikings, and I've been telling them for weeks this this Eagles defense is raw. They yeah. are good, and they showed up to play, and they didn't let them execute their game plan. And the other thing I've said that Nick Foles might be one of the most experienced backups in the league. Why is everybody counting this guy completely out? He's got a good team around him. Exactly. If he can manage. That's what I said. I think because we are prisoners of the name. If you're not a big name, if we've never seen you do it before, we just tune you out, man. That's just the way it is. If you're not Drew Brees or Matt Ryan or or even Phillip Rivers and Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, we tune you out. You don't exist to us. That's, that's not – True, you know it what I'm saying. True, no, we love to see the new guys come up and make a name, but like watching Casey all season, it's like God damn. Hashtag ugly thrown balls. The guy can't throw a goddamn pass. But I'm talking about for Nick Foles as to why oh, we Nick weren't Foles. buying oh, into Nick Foles. I was on Nick Foles' train. No, I know, but yeah, I, I told you Nick Foles started in the league once before. It's okay. Yes, he did. Let him play. He'll be all right. And the other thing that is team they, got, him? they got two really good running backs. They got a good old line, and they got a defense that is really, really good, and they're aggressive. And when your defense feels like they can be aggressive, you can make a lot of things happen on that side of the ball. He had a, and that's what we saw. I mean, two, with, they got Case Keenum, who, who has been really good, to turn the ball over multiple times. He, he has a really good team around him, Nick Foles, and – it was it was no let up. I mean, it, it it was a dip, just a little a little slight dip, but it was no let up. You know, when Wentz got hurt, and it it kind of showed. Like they played great ball. Period. It's hard. To, it's always going to be hard to go from an MVP candidate to a backup. Right. Now. Absolutely. But what got me more in this game wasn't even the game itself. It was all the extracurricular bullshit. No. Oh, the Eagles you know, suck. The pregame and people throwing <laughs> full beers at Vikings fans and all that craziness, man. I, I, I hate seeing stuff like but that. That's, it's like I will never, I will never go to a game in Philly, ever. Yeah. But yeah, but that's Philly fans, though. Like, have has anybody been paying attention over the last well, thirty so, years? <laughs> one of the 
famous things that Barbara Streisand's ever said. I hold true to it all the time. Is she says money doesn't change you, money just magnifies who you are. And wins don't change you. Wins just magnify who you are. So we didn't really notice the Eagle fans when they're six and ten. We don't really care about you. Don't get on TV. But when you're in the playoffs and you're winning the conference championship game, now you're magnifying that fan base. And now we're yep. seeing it. My question is. Is that fan base making you want to root for the evil empire? Hell yeah. They, they're horrible, man. I, dude, I know a diehard Eagles fan. Like, if you met this guy in person, he would definitely make you say, you know what? I'll, I'll just go against anybody that plays you. Anybody. Because you're just so fucking annoying. They, they, they're they nuts, man. So you're rooting for the I Patriots? I, I, I can't say I'm that. I'm rooting for the Patriots. I, I don't <laughs> want to see that fan base get a Super Bowl title. Yeah, it's almost like they don't deserve it. As annoying, no, they don't. as much as Patriot fans are giant mass holes, yeah. they yeah. still don't even <laughs> come close. They look, like, they look like angels compared to, to Eagles fans. Yeah, you're got, right. There's a, a great Twitter follow. The guy found us somehow, probably through our Boston insider. He goes by the Pats hole. Oh, yeah, nice. Like asshole, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Pats hole. <laughs> and he's a big Boston guy. And I got into it with him about which are more annoying, Pats fans or Eagles fans. <laughs> and course. I said Patriots fans yeah. right off rip. Uh-huh. And it's because they're relevant. Yeah. yeah. Patriots are always relevant. Yeah, Eagles fans. Eagles fans are not. They're going to go away next year. You know what I mean? Like We hope. I, no, no, they will. They I don't will. know. Wentz is good. No, 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 no. They will. Trust me. Go ahead. But I, but I think that that he he said something very interesting. I asked him. I said, Tell me that an environment in Gillette wouldn't be like this. He said, no, you'd get heckled, but we're not violent. Like, he said, Patriots fans aren't violent. They are, they're just overly confident. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's true. They're just like, they, they have that, it's not swagger. It's kind of just an annoyance of them. Like, yeah, we're going to win. Like, you can say. And I can't be mad at them because they're right. They're winning. Yeah, exactly. And that's why Philadelphia fans are just, you know, you talked about new money on Twitter today. Right. Philadelphia is absolutely new money, except yeah. they don't know how to use it at all. They're just going around just cashing checks. On, on, just, dude, they, they're they horrible. They're the worst fans I think I've ever seen. And and I've I've been in fights with Gator fans. Right. There, there's some there's some bad Philadelphia fans, man. You FSU fans can be hard to take. Too. Oh man, oh, no, can they no, ever? No, 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 no. Florida fans you know are the great? worst. He's the never had to deal with it. I, I want him to put on Gator Whatever. gear. I want you to put on Gator gear and go to the Doak and tell me if you feel the same way about Florida State fans afterwards. Whatever, man. It's Florida not fans fun, are man. the worst. I've done it. Yep. Florida fans are the worst, trust me. But back I've to been Phil- to the Doak in my Emmett jersey, man. It is not a fun environment to be in orange and blue. Either way, I still think Philadelphia is the worst. Oh, they are the worst. I'll ne- yeah. I'll, I will, I've will. been to the Doak in orange and blue. I will never go to a Philadelphia Eagles game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame you, man. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking about trying to go to Boston next year. The, the Packers play in Gillette next nice. year, and I would love to go see Rodgers and Brady square off. Oh, there you go. man, that'd be so cool. Yeah, that would be awesome. And I wouldn't hesitate buying that ticket, but I will never go to an Eagles game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, side note, that's kind of one of the things that annoys me about the NFL is the way they do their scheduling. It is a shame that Rodgers and Brady don't play each other more often. Yeah. They need to fix that scheduling thing where they only play once every four years because that's just – it's just it's asinine enough. that you have two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time of and all they'll time. probably play each other twice, maybe three times their yeah. whole entire career. Yeah. You know what's great too is the two teams, there's not a lot of hatred. It's it's respect. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when I talk to my Boston fans, my absolutely obnoxious Boston <laughs> friends about – the, the you know the argument of which one of them's the goat. I, I, I Tom Brady's got the hardware, man. I He's got the argue. hardware, absolutely. But at the same time, they'll be the first ones to say if I was going to have any other QB in the league, it'd be the other number. Well, yeah, of course. And, Boom. and I would agree with that. There's a respect level there, which is pretty cool too. So I, I'm, I'm hoping I can make that happen. I'm hoping I can get up there next year. I don't hate New England. Well, I do hate New England. 
I'm I'm not a Brady fan. <laughs> Me too. I'm not I'm not a Brady fan, but like you said, I can respect New England. I can't respect Philadelphia. I can respect the system. Yeah, you know what I mean, go. the system works. It's proven. Yeah. The system. I mean, it's greatness. When this is all said and done, we'll be telling our grandkids what they missed out on. They'll never know a, a team that went to a Super Bowl nine times in less than 20 years. It's just insane yep. to think about. Uh, we don't know that. I well, mean, cool thing, it could happen, cool, but I don't see any team cool, right now that could do it. Well, the, the cool thing is, too, is things are cyclical, man. Things are yeah. cyclical. What goes up? Must all mean it's gonna come down, and that's what Absolutely. makes that's what makes their nine Super Bowl appearances in this short amount of time so impressive. It's gonna come down at some point. Oh they, yeah, they, I mean when Tom Brady and Belichick disband. leave this year, when yeah. Tom Brady and Belichick leave, whenever that happens, this year. I mean it's gonna be, and then the Patriots will go trash. back to being a bottom dweller. I mean think about it, when we were growing up, the two teams in the AFC East, except for sometimes the Patriots were okay. They went to the Super Bowl in I think ninety four, yep. ninety five against you guys, but other than that. It was the Bills and Dolphins. Those were the bells of the ball of yep. the of the AFC of the AFC East. Now, obviously, if you talk to a twenty year old kid right now, he has no clue what you're talking about with the Dolphins like the and bills? the Bills. They're gonna be like, <laughs> those two trash teams used to be the bell of the ball. Well, yeah, that's what happens when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback in Jim Kelly and a Hall of Fame quarterback in Dan Marino. Yep, I've got a lot of FSU friends just like you do. And they talk a lot of trash and have for years and years and years. And I kept telling them, hey, what's up will come down. Absolutely. And all of a sudden, bye, Jimbo Fisher. <laughs> bye to you. You had one of the worst seasons of all time. And, and, and the trash talk comes, you know, the phone works both ways. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give you that. What goes up must come down. And I think eventually the Pats reign in the NFL is, is going to be over. Right. And this year. And it, it has been, to what you said, it has been really, really cool to watch, even though it's been really, really painful to deal with, with Patriots fans. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the last team that seems to be on an upward trend. We'll see if it continues from here on out. But the Jacksonville Jaguars, man, you hate to see a team lose like that because they controlled three and a half quarters of that game. And yeah. they just didn't, they didn't have that killer instinct that great teams have to just go for the jugular. They had so many chances to do that. Um, Leonard Fournette just didn't show up this game. In the second half, absolutely. Uh, they needed him to come through, and every time I saw him get the ball, half a yard to two yards at best. I mean, it, it, it was an exciting game. I mean, you, you love to root for the underdog. At least you guys do. Everybody was on the Bortles train, and – I still am not on the Bortles train. I was on the Fournette and the offensive line train. And like you said, they ne they just never showed up. They never they never came up and asserted themselves. And I also think the coach just got conservative in the fourth quarter, which always, almost always, will lose you the game. You, you're on a roll. You got them on the ropes. Even though you, your third quarter really wasn't that great, you got to go for You got to keep going. You got to keep trying. You cannot just give Tom Brady time on the clock. Honestly, this is why I'm a huge Steve Spurrier fan, man. He was a aggressive coach. You will never see Steve Spurrier sit on the lead. He's going to throw the ball and try to get as many points as he can because he knows that this is the kind of thing that happens to you. And I thought Blake Bortles did a pretty good job throwing the football. He had a couple of missed throws, but there's a lot of times on third down where they needed him to come up with the with the pass, and he did. Towards the end of the game, I feel like – they put too much on him when Fournette couldn't run the ball, and he just wasn't ready for that time. But overall, I think I'd give him a B minus on that on that game. I th yeah, I, I I got asked a question tonight: was it on Bortles or was it on the defense? And I said I think it's a little more on the defense. Um, you gave up those those you gave up that lead, you know. Yep. At the same time, I'm going to agree with both of you. I'm going to agree with Anthony. I'm not a Bortles Right in that fence. Not a Bortles fan. Not a Bortles guy. God. Not a Bortles guy at all. I'll make both of them definitive. How about that? Not a Bortles guy. We have Blake Bortles' doomsday clock, and it <laughs> finally clicked down, you know. Um, but he had a great year, and I'll agree with you in that Fournette couldn't run the ball, but I think I've got a good reason why. They made Bortles pass. Right. I, I think the defensive scheme 
and the defensive adjustments at half were to shut down Fournette. Yep. They're going to beat us, make Bortles do it in the air. Right. And and um, I think you're right. He did get some key, some key, you know, key conversions. But there were some points in time where I was looking for the defense to make a big play. Now, what Jacksonville did well is they got after Tom Brady. And that is the key to beating that team. Brady you frustrated gotta, the you hell out of him. Brady on his ass. Yeah. And if you can't, he's going to tear you apart. If you give him time, he's a great, greatest quarterback of all time. He's right. a future Hall of Famer. And that's why, that's why he tore him apart in the fourth quarter is they couldn't get to him. They couldn't yeah. get to him. They had already knocked him down. They had already sacked him three times. Yeah. And they had seven quarterback knockdowns. Right. In a playoff game against a playoff caliber team, that's a lot. Absolutely. That's a lot of knockdowns. So so my thing is, is you get after the quarterback like that, you need your your DBs to step up. And and the defensive backs couldn't get it done. They, you, I, I kept waiting for the defense to get a takeaway. You get a takeaway, that's a different game. And they never got it. And it, you know, it turned out being the difference. I mean, Jacksonville was kind of built on their defense getting takeaways and sacking the quarterback. They got one part right and couldn't get the other part right. Again, and that's what just separates Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the New England Patriots from everybody else is they do what they got to do to win a game. And if, like I said, they had to go for the jugular, they did it a really good job doing it. Against the Pittsburgh Steelers the week before, they went up big. When they needed a touchdown, they got one. Couldn't do it this week or this year. Or sorry, yeah, this week uh, against the Patriots. So it sounds like I wrote on a question, what do you do if you're Minnesota-Jacksonville? It sounds like you guys are ready to move on from Keenum and, and Bortles. Am I right in that? Hashtag ugly thrown balls. Yes. B- Bortles isn't your guy. Like, he's, okay, I- I'll give you this about Bortles. And I'm going to be completely honest. He had a great game. He had a decent game against uh, the Patriots. The rest of the season, nothing he did impressed me. I mean, halfway through the season, people were already saying, get rid of him. You know what I'm saying? They were winning. So, I mean, he's he's just not your guy. He's he's not he's not the leader of the team. I'm sorry. I um I'm moving on from Bortles. I I think I think that 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 team success this year was built on on defense and, and running the ball really well with Leonard Fournette. Um, as far as Case Keenum goes, I think he's earned it. I think there's more question marks surrounding Teddy Bridgewater and the other options they have there. I think Case Keenum's a, a, a good enough quarterback. Do I think Blake Bortles is done in the NFL? I'm not going to go that far, but I, I, I think I think there's some other QB options you can look at this offseason and – you know, you've got Bortles to fall back on if you can't make any of those others happen. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I know you're a big Bortles guy. I, I'm, I'm just not. I, I think he's. he's now you're confusing. Very, you're, yeah, he's a bandwagon. No, 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 you're confusing me for Kyle. I'm, yeah, I'm Kyle more of a Bortles. big Bortles. Like I want to see him do well, just because he's, okay. he's from our area. From he area, actually yeah, went yeah, to yeah, high yeah, school yeah. right up the street from us. Um, it was cool that he was recruited as a tight end everywhere else, and then George O'Leary. Said, "Hey, you come play for UCF. We'll make you a quarterback." And the fact that he was able to turn himself into a third overall pick, I felt like he should have stayed at UCF another year. But that's a so did I. So another did I. story for another day. But um, the difference between Minnesota and Jacksonville is Minnesota's got options. Like you said, they can sign Keenum, or they can sign Bridgewater, or they can sign Bradford. All three of those guys are going to be looking for a job, and they can kind of go back and forth between the three guys and say, "Hey." Uh, Keenum, Bradford's going to sign for this much, or Bridgewater's going to sign for this much. We we don't know that you're that much better. So, you know, and I think all three of those quarterbacks benefited from the system that Zimmer's got in place there. I don't know that any three of those guys can go to, say, the Browns, or I don't know, let's say the Redskins move on from Kirk Cousins, go to, go to the Redskins, and to have the same success that they had in Minnesota. So I feel like yeah. they kind of need each other sort of deal. Whereas Jacksonville, I don't know where you turn. You get the 29th pick. I don't know what quarterback's going to be available at 29. Um, I was listening to the Jacksonville radio station the other day. He was talking about how you had to get rid of 
all of these guys in order to sign somebody like Kirk Cousins? I don't know. Like, what are your options outside of Blake Bortles? That I don't know. I mean, it's attractive. That's an attractive place right now for a big name quarterback, Kirk right. Cousins. I mean, you can go there immediately and assert yourself and start to win. You know, right? I th- I think they don't have to pick him up in the draft. I think they maybe get pick up a free agent or one of these guys that they can trade for. Bortles, Bortles' value has gone up as far as season and numbers has have have shown. So he's a he's a commodity now. So one of these lesser t- one of these lesser teams, the Browns. <laughs> maybe they don't draft a quarterback. Maybe they maybe they you know trade for one and maybe uh, gives Jacksonville some money to go get one of these guys who are ready to win now instead of trying to groom another guy. Leonard Fournette, you know, running backs don't last long in the league. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's an angry runner. So they're going to need somebody to couple with him really quick to capitalize off of that, that offensive line in him. Yeah. So I, I think they go get one instead of trying to I'll, draft one. I'll agree with everything he just said. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Bortles' stock has definitely went up. I think that you can definitely – you have a marketable squad right now. It's much of a dumpster fire as Jacksonville has always been. You've got a great defense, and you've got a great running back, and he's young, and he's healthy. And yeah. all of that's marketable. I just I, – I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I, I'm not sold on Bortles. One year isn't going to do it for me. I think we can see him regress, you know, and – I tell you what, though, know. this offseason is shaping up to be pretty exciting at the quarterback position. A oh, lot yeah. of free agencies coming up. You got Kirk Cousins. What are they going to do? You got Drew Brees. What What does he do? Brees. What are his yeah. options? Wow. Um, Forgot about that name. And you got teams that, like Jacksonville, like Arizona Cardinals, that are just a quarterback away from taking that next step. Do you yeah. go? Do you go rookie? Do you go Case Keenum? Do you go Teddy Bridgewater? Do you do you take Drew Brees? How much do you sign Drew Brees for if you want to lure him away from from New Ooh, Orleans? Man, I mean that'll be a scary team. Who Drew Brees? Drew Brees Jackson, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. That'll be a scary team, Gross. man. I mean, yeah. Even Miami, I feel like they should move on from their quarterback position. Who Tannehill? From going to be the guy. Tannehill. Tannehill? Fuck. Yeah. I mean, I think he will be the guy, but I think they should move. If if you could get Drew Brees, I mean, they missed out on Drew Brees the first time around when they went with Dante Culpepper. I've got a couple. I've got a couple free agency takes. So all right, go I think, ahead. I think I think New Orleans ownership goes to Drew Brees and says, "You belong here. You're the greatest saint that's ever wore the jersey, and we want you to retire here. We're going to sign you to a one two year deal, maybe a third year option, and we're going to draft a guy." And he's going to learn under you until you're right. ready to go. Um, and I think I think he'll do it because the city's been good to him so far. Yeah, he and he's been good anywhere. to the city. Yeah, he doesn't want to go anywhere. I think if you're Miami, you don't bring in a bum like Jacob. <laughs> Oh man! But they do Smoking it time and time again, though, right? It's what they've been known for it's since like, Dan Marino, so, man. So, oh, so. man. I, 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 it <laughs> makes no sense to me then, because it, the way I make sense of it in my mind is they go to Tannehill and say, "Hey, this squad is still yours. We're not replacing you. We're bringing in this guy right on a on a one year contract. Like when you're better, the squad's yours." And, and, you know, I, I, I think Tannehill is who Marino likes. I think Tannehill is who, who they want to go with. I thought also that this would be Big Ben's last year. And he's come out and said it's not. And that brings questions around Kirk Cousins because I thought Big Ben would be gone and they would, they've got all the pieces they want to win now. They just Ooh, plug Kirk Cousins in. Forgot. I thought Kirk Cousins ended up in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and that would have been a good spot for him, too. I think he's – a lot of people are down on him because he doesn't go to the playoffs and everything, but I feel like a lot of that has to be on their GM and, and a little bit on Gruden as well. You can't just put it all on, on Kirk Cousins as to why they're they're not going to the playoffs every year. Yep. So that would be – we talk about weapons and teams that are ready to go. Like – Big Ben, because you know my my thoughts on Ben. You know he's the weakest link of that that offense. Well, yeah, I for sure. He, you, I think he's done. He's yeah. on the verge of retirement. If if that job opens up, 
You take a pay cut to go there, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean well, I you're going to. I mean, if they keep everybody, you say, you know what? Well, after I'll they're done pay paying Le'Veon Bell and, and Antonio Brown, you're going to have to take a pay cut because there's not going to be much much cap space exactly. after that. So Le'Veon Bell exactly. got the franchise tag. So he, so, you know. They gave him the franchise tag? I don't know. They, they gave him last year, right? Right. I think they're they renegotiating. The last two years. Okay, so it's going to cost them a lot. Just like the Redskins are going to have to pay Cousins $34 million. Redskins ain't paying Cousins. Cousins is no, out of the no, Redskins. Uh, you talking Bell? Yeah, they gave it They gave it to Bell once. They've given yeah. Kirk Cousins, Cousins twice. Yeah. yeah, twice. So, so, you, so he wants out, and I think Bell just wants a five-year contract. He right. Just wants to, he just wants to have some security. So, so if you can get a big-name quarterback like Cousins – and sign Le'Veon Bell to a five year deal. Oh my God, that is, and and, and that Tom was Brady. Take. Tom Brady's done like, this year. I felt like this was Big Ben's last year. Yeah, and because of the pieces they already have, they go get somebody ready to win now. You you go get somebody ready to win now. Tom Brady's done. Belichick's probably you know he'll probably stick around, but without Tom Brady, I'm not sure he can do it. He traded Garoppolo away, so I mean, no. Pittsburgh is in a prime position. Next yeah, year, spot. to to make some noise with a with a big name quarterback, you get rid of Big Ben and you bring in Cousins or right, uh, or no, they they'll never get Breeze. So but man, that'll be awesome right there, right? Was, I'll, I'll watch there's those some games. interesting spots right now. <laughs> yeah. though. Like it's gonna be interesting. Like I said, to see what Denver does, it's gonna be interesting to see if Jameis ends up getting. You know. They're gonna tighten his leash at some point. Like, oh, not they have just to let him do what he's been doing. Hey, Tom, he's Tom, he's Tom, on that Bortles level right now, man. Yeah, but he Coach is. Tomlin would be excellent for a guy like Jameis. You know what I'm I mean, saying? Tomlin's not going anywhere for a Tomlin's while. Tomlin's not going anywhere. If they fire Tomlin, they deserve everything they get for the next thirty years, which would be shit. But if they if they can sign Jameis, Jameis would be perfect for Tomlin, the, the the mentor under. I mean, that would be. The best combination for Jamison actually to go and actually uh, learn to play see, the game. That would be see awesome. An organization like Pittsburgh rolling the dice on a guy like Jamison. That would yeah. be awesome. That Jamis would instantly straighten up. For one, there's nothing to do in Pittsburgh. Two, that's not true. <laughs> there's a lot of alcohol there's and a lot, a lot of, of crazy people out there to do in Pittsburgh. I've never been, but the stories I hear, man. But you know, I heard that's a really fun town to be in. I, I get it's it. Cool, yeah. But man, James, Jamison under Tomlin would be. The best scenario for him, the NFL, Pittsburgh, all the way around. It, it'll be you awesome. Ain't kidding though. It's hey. gonna be it's gonna be an electric off season. This yeah. off it's gonna be bigger than what the NBA did with all those trades and everything. The way it goes, and who would have thought two months ago that the one team that have their feet kicked back, relaxing, is gonna be the San Francisco Forty Nine ers. They got their guy. Season. They got their guy. They can either redshirt him or sign him to a big deal. Not redshirt him, but franchise tag him or sign him to a big deal. Either way, they're set. And I didn't think that they would be two months ago, man. Yeah, two months ago, we were just like, uh, just throw it away and start all over. But they got their guy, and I've always liked Jimmy. I I, I like Jimmy G. I think he's going to do good in San Francisco, even though he has – even though he finished the season with the same stats as um, one quarterback that didn't play this season. I'm just saying I just thought he was unproven. I wanted to see more, and we've seen it now. And right. He looks good. He looks good. You know, it, I felt like we didn't know enough about him. I felt like he was, he could have went there and busted. I felt like he could have went there and been Brock Osweiler in Houston. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, man. Well, we're going to roll on with our MVPs, cancel out, or close out the show. Did you pick one out or – Ah, uh, I did not. I, I, I can give I can give you one though. Sure, go ahead. I don't have MVP. I got dumbass of the week. There you go. Oh. That's that's the way he does it anyways. That's yeah, the way yeah, he yeah. rolls. I, go ahead. I gave dumbass of the week this week to Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> I gave it to Jalen Ramsey for getting up there and saying, We go into the Super Bowl and we gonna win that bitch. Oh yeah? Uh. You are? Because you still gotta go to Gillette and beat the best that's ever done it. You ain't going to the Super Bowl. Oh, you get dumbass of the week for putting your team under that kind of pressure. Yeah. You get dumbass of the week for calling your team out like that. Yeah. That's bad, pretty bad. But that's bad one of the, that's the one thing in sports where if it works, you look like a genius, and if you if it doesn't work, you look like a dumbass. And he looks like and a you're dumbass. the dumbass He's, of the week. He looks like a dumbass. <laughs> so it is what it is. You got one? Or you want me to go? 
No, you can go. All right. No, I'll uh, go. No, I got. I got. All I'll right, go. you got one. Go ahead. So, so my, uh, you know, I love to pull him out the bag. Uh, my uh, MVP goes to uh, R. Kelly, not because he did anything great, but there's a petition actually out there to shut him up. People are out there, out there actually signing petitions to shut people up. They don't want R. Kelly to say anything anymore. I don't. It just just came out the blue. Nobody wants R. Kelly to talk. Nobody wants his songs. How, how many? People are on this petition. I don't understand. I have I don't no understand. idea. But it's Mute R. Kelly. It's, it's a petition called Mute R. Kelly. It is. It's out there. This is what's wrong with our country This today. is absolutely what's wrong with because our country. Because too many people think they got a voice and... They, they have a voice to shut other voices up. Just, just for no reason at all. Mute R. Kelly. That's, that's, that's the most, what's wrong with our country. Well, we no, have, I mean, there's tons <laughs> of things. But I'm just saying, like, how we... we we but got like, people out here eating laundry detergent. <laughs> right. Well, I was going to give those guys know. my MVP, but I don't want too much attention I don't know to what's worse, them. eating laundry detergent or starting a petition to the shut mute, somebody okay. up. Like, That's crazy, right? Like, what? I don't get it. I don't know. So we're, we're, stupid, man. Actually, the laundry detergent is worse. The laundry detergent has to be the absolute stupidest thing I've ever seen anybody. <laughs> I, I, I so still, dumb. I still think that the story's fake. I just, it's so it's, dumb. It's I can't not, believe that it's true. Videos are all online. Oh, dude. So this is. Dude, so so I have kids. So we didn't learn anything from. Remember when they were doing? Uh, <laughs> they were doing. The, they were drinking the uh, the hand sanitizer. Yeah, yeah, stupid uh, kids trying to get drunk. So I have kids. Something like that. So I have kids. So I have to pay attention to this. You know, I have teenagers. Not that my teenagers mm -hmm. are stupid, but you know, no, you're right. When when stuff comes up like this, I have to read it to say, all right, what's the root of it and what everybody's doing. And I I, I said the same thing. This is fake. No one's actually this stupid. Remember, I put on Twitter one time. Every time I say. We can't be this stupid. Someone proves me wrong. Right. Well, the videos prove me wrong. We are that stupid. Well, these kids are that stupid. And there is just a Tide Pod challenge. I don't even buy so Tide Pods. Dumb. So I'm all right, I guess. But yeah. Did you guys see the, the Gronk video that he did with Tide? Yes. Where <laughs> Tide they asked, D. like, Tide basically says, should we eat Tide Pods? And Gronk's like, no. No. What if it's for fun? No. no. <laughs> hey, you got to hand it to Tide for just rolling with it, making fun of themselves. Well, well you know what happened, right? So, you know, you got to read back into the subject line. They got sued a couple of years back because kids were small, swallowing the Tide's pod. The little babies, they were, they were little. So they made them bigger. You know, they were actually concentrated. So They you know, put them in, like, big zippers exactly. and, like, child-proof things. So, so they made them bigger. They put them in this child lock proof and everything like that because, you know, we can't trust parents not to tell their kids don't swallow that shit. So <laughs> they did everything they could to not make them accessible and swallow kids swallow them. And now they have these kids that are going out there swallowing Tide Pods and going to the hospital. Well, we know what's going to happen. One of these parents are going to go go to Tide and say, I'm going to sue you because my kid, my 17-year-old, ate a fucking Tide pod. And and they're going to fucking win because that's America. That's that's what we do. We sue people, we get rich, and we keep it moving. And Tide has to change their formula all over again. Well, Tide, I guess, said, not this fucking time. We're not going to change our formula. We're not going to make them bigger. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get ahead of it. We're going to get... Our our, spawn, our guy out here, and we're going to tell you what not to do with Tide Pods. So I applaud him. I think I think it's a great marketing ploy. Get ahead of it before somebody actually says, "Hey, Tide, I need a million dollars because my kids swallow Tide Pods." All right, that was uh... <laughs> my my rant for teenage kids. <laughs> Stupid man, man, the things that we've come to. <laughs> I don't even know how to continue from that. I guess my MVP is going to be uh, Jeff Beck. He's the host over there at 12 Ounce Sports. He's the one that set up this whole 12 Ounce Sports radio. Um, it's really awesome that he's included all of us into his little radio station thing Absolutely. that he's got going on. And the fact that he's been very supportive of all of our shows. I know he's been supportive of you, Clayton, and, uh, and our show. And I think it's awesome sure. that he's going to allow us to use his platform to go live next week. And we're really excited about it. My co-MVP... It's to you, buddy, Clayton. Thanks for coming on our show, whoop, whoop. man. Filling in. I, I think we're just going to have to make you a permanent resident because you're better than Kyle. I know oh, Anthony man. has to agree with that because you said at least five or six times that you agree with Anthony. And Kyle never does that. <laughs> so no. He'll go opposite you, just, just because. Y'all like to pick on Anthony. I, 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 I get that when I listen to y'all's show. 
It's all and right. I bring to, it. I tend to be like, man, let you, it, let you, know, you know why it is? Bring it, man. I thought bring about it. this because I, I try to be cognizant of the fact that we do pick on Anthony a lot and I don't pick on Kyle. Kyle doesn't pick on, but I think the reason why they're white is no, <laughs> is <white>. because. <laughs> If I make fun of Kyle, Kyle just rolls with it, and he just he, does. he, he just, just makes fun of himself it. with it. So it's hard yeah. to make fun of somebody yeah. who makes fun of himself. But if I talk about Anthony in a romper, he gets all uptight, and he's I'm not like, on a romper. like you saw last week, we called him a romper. nerd for watching Star Wars, and he's like, I'm no nerd. I'm not a nerd. I'm not a nerd. I got on Twitter. I got on Twitter right away. Like, hey. Thank Star you. Wars I appreciate that. Harry Potter is awesome. It oh, is awesome, man. but it's also nerd. And being Whatever. a nerd is awesome, and it's okay. Whatever. You got to accept that. Whatever, man. So, so I've been I've been sick the last couple of days. Stayed home. Yeah. And uh, I just binge watched Harry Potter one after the Boom, other. Boom, baby! All, all the way through go. eight. No, I'm I'm on like se- I'm gonna watch seven and eight tonight. Once you start, you can't stop, right? No, I gotta have it. it like even though it. you watched it like three or four times, you like I watch one. Oh shit, I gotta watch them all over again. I get that way. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. Speaking speaking of how stupid Americans are, I I you know those fidget spinners? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bought my wife one that looks like a golden snitch. It's ah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Anthony would like that because he's I, I all about really that golden stuff. I really appreciate you guys having me on, man. We, 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 you know, we like what you guys do. We love what the 12 ounce guys have done for us. I don't know about y'all, but we've seen our downloads go up ever since yeah. we've uh, started working with them and, and, you know, working with you guys and working with you. Awesome. And I, 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 I really appreciate this. You know, it, it is super cool. This little podcast community that yeah, we've made and, you know, we've got friends you know, we're up here. I'm from down there, but we, we've got you guys down in Florida. We've got them in, you know, two man band down there in Kentucky and in Tennessee and right. Louisiana. And we've got friends out on the West Coast now. And, and it, it's really cool to make these, awesome. these different connections within the industry. And at the end of the day, that's what we do this for, right? Right. We make Ooh. friends. We enjoy doing it. And, and just talk and, sports. And, talk shit. Dude, I, t- I tell, I say it all the time. When we stop enjoying getting together and prepping for these shows and doing it, when we, when it's not fun to us anymore, you're just going to stop hearing from BSR. Right. Like, it, we're just going to stop doing it. Absolutely. And you may hear, I may still keep the Twitter feed right, but if me and Bertzik stop enjoying this, we're not, we're just not going to do it anymore. That's why we do it. We like it. Because honestly, when, when you get to that point too, your show's going to suck. That's all yeah, there is to it. Suck it's going to blow work. when you're when it becomes work. Yeah, you're going to work in with a, and, you're going to walk in with a suit and tie. We've tried to keep things fresh, and we've tried to, you know, for the new year, we're trying not to be so stat heavy and talk a little more about how we feel about things. I hate stats, and, and you know, it, it's it, we enjoy the show anyway, and 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 that's what we do it for. You know, and I enjoy we, listening I, to you guys, man. I I appreciate you guys having me on. We are at Podcast BSR on Twitter. You can find all of our stuff there. Um, Dan's at DXMoney30. I've got a Twitter account, but I'm not even going to give it to you because it doesn't matter. I'm always <laughs> at Podcast BSR. That's yeah, the yeah. one I really use. I and um, and we, we're on 12 Ounce Radio tomorrow. Cool, man. Yeah. Hey, also, when next time you see Zick or text him or whatever, let him know. Chris America is still 1-0 and against him. <laughs> oh, six picks. 1-0. He, he had a rough year, man. No, man. Hey, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. He had a great year. He just had tougher competition, man. He went from he went from Conference USA to the SEC. That's all it was. Oh. Can, can, can I plug something else real quick? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, man. Tiger Woods comes back this week. Uh, I can't wait. We've got I our guess. BSR DraftKings League, and there's golf already up for this weekend. Okay. I think you picked six golfers. Right. Obviously, the, the key to win in the DraftKings, I'm going to give you the key is you want to pick guys that are going to make the cut. So right. that way you make money all the way through. You know gotcha. what I mean? Um, or you get points all the way through. Right. Because if your guy misses the cut, you're, done. you're not getting any points for those days after. You're only getting points right. for the guys that made the cut. So the we've got that up right now. You can find that link. It's pinned to our profile at Podcast BSR on Twitter. And then the other thing I'll plug is we do a March Madness thing every year. And the winner of the March Madness pool, the BSR March Madness pool, gets to come on for our NFL draft special. 
Nice. So that that'll be coming up in a couple of months as well. Awesome. Cool beans. Cool man. All right. Well, we appreciate you having. Hold on. Our wait, show. man. One last thing. What do you got? Anybody interested in the Pro Bowl? Oh, I mean. I I, I kind of saw that on my note. We were running late, and I'm like, I know I'm not interested in the I'm Pro Bowl. I'm not interested in the Pro Bowl. I'm more interested in the skills challenge yeah. than I am the Super Bowl. I'll tell you that. Well, there you go. Nobody cares about the Pro Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. Yeah, you're talking about the dodgeball stuff, right? I love that. Yeah. 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 That yeah. moves. That's moving the radar for me more than the Super Bowl is. Boom. There you go. All right. Well, tune in next week where we'll discuss that time Anthony cried when he got killed in dodgeball. By a bunch of girls. I never got killed in dodgeball. <laughs> See ya.